Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Good evening, everyone. This is Elder Parker of Oakwood Church of God in Christ, located at 4712 North Albury Road, Godfrey, Illinois, where Pastor Andre Reed is the pastor. I want to thank you for tuning in to our service this evening. We consider it a privilege to have you with us. If you're ever in the Alton Godfrey area and are looking for a Bible-based church, stop by Oakwood Church of God in Christ and we'll make you feel right at home. Saints, the word tonight is coming from Mark chapter 1, verses 23 to 34, and it reads, and there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, thou art the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him and saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded, he even the unclean spirit, and they do obey him. And immediately, his fame spread abroad throughout all the regions around about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife, mother, lay sick of a fever. And straight away, they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many, that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. The Lord had the may the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his most precious word. Saints, I want to talk to you tonight on the subject. The one with authority. The one with authority. Tonight, I want to just take a few minutes to look at this unusual power of our Lord. It says, the Bible says, while he's in the synagogue, he's preaching like one who has authority. They now are all amazed. They are astonished their mouth drops open because they had never encountered one like Jesus. They listened to the sermons of the rabbis and the priests, but Jesus stands up in the midst and preaches with power and authority so that they are all amazed by his words. But to even further demonstrate who he is, there's three things that happen in this passage of scripture to show us that Jesus has all the power. And it says, and they went into Capernaum while he was preaching there in the synagogue. And the scripture says, while he was still in the synagogue, there came amongst them one possessed by the devil. A man with an unclean spirit. Now, many of them back in the day believed that people were mentally unstable and not really demon-possessed 
or they had some mental challenges or some psychological maladjustment. But the Bible, the Bible calls it demon possession. And saints, tonight, there are some people among us right now who are possessed of the devil. Because if you are not a believer, you are subject to do anything. And the devil can possess you and make you do irrational things, not only to yourself, but to other people. Every time you turn on the news, there is shooting here and there's a shooting over there. Or well, I think on the news this week, they talk about a lot of break-in on different businesses in the city of Florida. Saints, that's demon possession. When children who cannot obey their parents, who cannot be controlled or contained, that's possession by the devil. The devil will take control where there is no Christ. Let me repeat that. The devil will take control where there is no Christ, where there is no Savior, where there is no Lord. Satan come in to take control. And if you run him out without calling in Jesus, he goes and brings with him seven spirits more evil than himself and they enter and they dwell there. When you don't know Jesus Christ, you're subject to be controlled by the devil. If you're, if you're not serving Jesus Christ, you're serving the devil. This unclean spirit has so possessed this man that it brought him to the church. That's a word for us this evening, saints, that even the unclean spirit in that man drove him to church. He was controlled by the devil. Jesus didn't run him away. Jesus knew what the man's problem was. Jesus tonight still has all power over all demons. The text says, here they are with these demons, and the demons knew who Jesus is. They say, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Or thou come to destroy us? Now, listen to this word of praise. I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. But now Jesus says, hold your peace. I don't want praises from the devil. Jesus is saying, be muzzled. Don't you praise me, Satan. I want to get praise from the one who the devil had possessed that I redeemed. When the devil praises him, Jesus said, be muzzled. Hold your peace. Don't praise me. I don't want praise from the devil. I want praise from the one who had been perfected from the devil. Jesus is not looking for praise from the devil. He's looking for praise for someone who has been delivered. Thank you, Jesus. Someone who used to have a drinking demon. Someone who used to have a lying demon. Someone who used to have a drug demon. Someone who used to have a fortification demon. Someone who had a demon that wouldn't let you praise God. But since God has delivered you, he does not want praise from the devil, but from the one who has been delivered. Saints, those of us who, those of us who have been delivered, we got no problem giving God the praise because we're glad to come out from under the stronghold that had us bound. We don't mind giving God the praise. We think about how God has stepped in at the right time, and we're not going to let anybody stop us from praising and giving God the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks, it doesn't have to be Sunday morning. It doesn't have to be Friday night. 
It doesn't have to be Tuesday night Bible study. We will give God praise in our car. If the answer comes to you on Wednesday, we will give God some praise. If he brings you out on Saturday morning, we will give God the praise. We won't let anybody muzzle our praise. He has power over all demons. Then the text says, he has power over minor disruptions. Because when he got through preaching, he went to Simon Peter's house. And at Simon's house, his mother-in-law had a fever, a fever that kept her in bed. And when Jesus got to the house, he just took her by the hand and the fever left her. Now, what that says to us is there's no disruption, no small detail for Jesus. Getting rid of the demon from the man was a big thing. Relieving Peter's mother-in-law from the fever was a small thing. But God take care of the big things and the little things. Some, sometimes we don't want to bring the little stuff to Jesus. The saints, Jesus is concerned about our little problems. Now think about this. If he can run out of demon, he certainly can get rid of a fever. You know, I look back at the Old Testament. I look back on the story of Elijah in the Old Testament when he when he challenged the prophets of Baal and the groves of prophets to come and meet him and, and challenge them at Mount Carmel. And God answered by fire. And Elijah stood up to 850 prophets. But now on the other hand, then he ran from one woman named Jezebel. He ran for his life. Now, wait a minute. If God can help you against 850, surely God can take care of one. Saints, there's no minor thing in your life that's too small for Jesus to take care of. The scripture says that after Jesus, that's Peter's mother-in-law, she went into the kitchen and ministered unto them. Well, that's not a small thing. It never would have happened if she had not been relieved of that fever. Jesus took care of that minor disruption so that she could be blessing to them. And God will handle the minor disruptions in our lives because there's nothing that concerns you that he will overlook. He takes care of of the smallest details. And then the Bible goes on and says, he, he has numbered every hair on your head. Now, if God takes the, takes, takes the time to number every hair on your head, is there anything too big or small to come up in your life that's too big for God to handle? Saints, I trust him in my car. I trust him when I'm flying. I trust him when I'm at home by myself. You see, I know where my strength is. I know where my protection is. When you get up this morning, you're feeling fine. But you don't know what's going to happen between now and to the time you go to bed. But God has already gone before you to move some of that stuff right out of your way. He's already taking care of some of the small details in your life. He has the power over demons. He has the power over disruption. And finally, he has power over diseases. Now, the text says, Jesus healed many sick people, meaning he didn't heal all the sick people because it's not always his will to heal. Now, you've got to be awfully mature to accept that he does not always choose to move the affliction. Sometimes sickness comes so that he can get the glory over your situation. Sometimes he does not remove the thorn. Sometimes the thorn is there to remind you of our dependence upon him. 
But during those times, his grace is sufficient. Even when it doesn't, even when he doesn't remove the affliction, he gives us power and strength in the midst of it. Lord, you don't have to move the mountain, just give me the strength. Saints, whatever problem you're facing, God will strengthen you and get under your burden with you, and the stronger you will become. Why? Because, saints, he has the power. He's got the power and the authority. Pray for me. Man. I never right. want to leave the presence of the Lord without giving everyone an opportunity to give their life to the Lord. If you heard this message, if you're tired of your life and you want to change, in Romans 10 and 9 it says, if we openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. If you've been blessed by this message or you're just fed up with your present day life, just repeat after me. Lord, I come to you a willing vessel, confessing all my sins. I receive you into my life and make you my Lord and Savior. I canceled every assignment of the enemy and I declare my life will never be the same again. Thank you, mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.